Good morning, Devils fans. It is 7.15 on July 8th, and with free agency still in a holding pattern, I want to take a slightly different approach to today's episode, and that would be discussing the Jay Fresh Fan Vote 2017 redraft. If you're not familiar with Jay Fresh, he does excellent work, mostly in the analytics community, over on Twitter, always engaging in conversation, providing excellent content like this. Definitely give him a follow, at Jay Fresh Hockey. So what this is was a poll he put out to his Twitter followers who then voted on a 2017 redraft. Um, my biggest issue really just comes in the top five as I don't want to get too deep into the weeds further down in the draft as I do feel there is a very clear top five here. Uh, then followed by, uh, spoiler alert, Jake Ottinger and then a clear and heavy drop off after that point to the rest of the draft. So, uh, as fo- voted on by Jay Fresh's followers, uh, number one overall was Kale McCarr, followed by Elias Pettersson, Jason Robertson, Miro Heiskinen, and finally at fifth, Nico Heischer. So, I think you can take a pretty good guess of where my issue was. In my redraft, I want to start from the bottom and have a discussion at who I have at fifth overall, which would be Miro Heiskinen. I love Miro. I think he is an absolute stud of a defenseman, but the top of this draft class is a bit stacked, and uh, unfortunately, this has him falling to fifth overall. His impacts have been a bit less impressive uh, this past season, even though his production did take a nice leap. I think he is still a top D-man in this league and will be fighting for Noah's votes likely year in and year out. He will continue uh, to make arguments to push up further in this top five, which I could see happening for sure, uh, but it is going to be tough given the other names remaining on this list. For But for now, I do think this is the least debatable of the five. Um, it's only dropping him a single spot here, uh, and I'll get into why I think obviously Nico deserves to be ahead of him in this redraft. Uh, but this last season was really his first real breakout production-wise, Previously, all the underlying metrics were there, and he still put up pretty good numbers. But this year, where he did put up the numbers, the metrics then fell off. So I think we really just need to uh, continue to see Miro develop uh, as the years go by and really put that full package together, which I have full faith in him doing. Uh, When he was first in the league, I was hammering and hammering away if this was someone we should target. Uh, But Dallas was very smart in saying that he was untouchable. Uh, and I agree with them. Uh, absolutely love Miro. Stud of a player. Uh, Dallas is absolutely lucky to have him. Moving on to fourth overall, this is where it really became a struggle for me. And I think at this point, almost any of these guys really have an argument for going first overall. Uh, especially here at the 3-4 spot, it was very close to being interchangeable. But I did value position here. And thus, Jason Robertson was my fourth overall. An absolute force on the ice since coming into the league. He's not just easily the best winger of this draft, but he's also in the combo for best in the league. He finds open ice and puts pucks in net. What else do you really want from a top scoring winger? If we were talking pure offensive talent, he probably goes first overall in this draft. However, uh, the overall impact on the game a winger just does not bring as much, generally speaking, as centers and defensemen. Uh, But... Even with J-Rob's absolutely enormous impact on the offensive end of the ice transition and even has stellar defensive play for a winger, uh, basically when he's on the ice, that puck tends to be in the offensive zone. It is still not as big of an impact as the guys ahead of him here in this redraft. I really still struggled with putting him ahead of the next guy, but like I said, when you take the full package of play in, um, if you shut down J-Rob on the offensive end, if you manage to find a way to do that, his impact on the game is obviously very, very much less so. And thus, I bring us to my third overall in this redraft, Elias Pedersen. What a complete player. He does almost everything you want to see on the ice and clearly has a high offensive ability and the highest offensive ability, I think, of any center in this draft. He's going to continue to get Selkie votes and maybe be a finalist uh, for a run or two at some point in his career. Where he loses ground, though, uh, to 
players I have ahead of him, is his off-the-puck and situational play, especially more in the dirty, dirty, dirtier areas of the ice comparatively. I still think he can get to those areas uh, and plays a very solid game in them, uh, but just is outclassed a bit by the other players. I do want to take a little bit of an aside here as I am talking about Pedersen as somehow, some way, the fans of the team he plays for, I find to be overbearing is probably the nice way to put it. Um, I'm a Devils fan through and through, live in Jersey, always have, hopefully always will, but somehow, even though I've never met a Canucks fan in real life and I have to deal with Flyers fans being here in South Jersey, maybe not so much recently with their level of play, are Rangers fans and their media market constantly talking about us everywhere possible, especially since beating them here in the first round. Somehow, some way, Nux fans still find their way into my sphere and end up being the most annoying of all of them. Pedersen is amazing. You guys have great players, and yet you guys still end up seemingly unable to do anything with them and are wasting their talents. I hope you can extend Pedersen for your guys' sake, but for his, I hope he finds his way out. Uh, probably the best thing I can say for you guys is that at least one of the best players in your history is going to also be a devil, and I think you should take some pride in that. Uh, but I don't want to linger on this too much. Uh, so to move on to my second overall pick, and thus revealing my first overall, it is Nico Heischer. So he is the only player of these top five to play in every season post-draft. He is finally, outside of his rookie year, playing with actual teammates, and thus we finally see a bump in his production. His defensive play has always been there and has really taken step forwards in these recent years and I think is easily the best defensive play of this group outside of the guy I have at number one. The reason he isn't firmly in this position in redrafts, in my opinion, is because the production wasn't always there. Absolutely fair critique. Uh, he wasn't lighting the world on fire with production but still always had that 200-foot game. However, a couple seasons ago, he did outpace Pedersen in production and had the better of the two-way play then and is still clearly the better two-way player now and plays all of those off-ice and uh, different situations outside of the offensive zone better than Pedersen, and that's where I do put him above Petty. That being said, my goodness, the offensive talent on Pedersen is insane. I've always said for years, anytime I've gotten into this argument with these redrafts, that Pedersen is the clearly more gifted offensive talent of the two players, but Nico is going to have the better career. We will see how this plays out, uh, but as Jay Fresh said in the comments of this uh, Twitter thread, this isn't about who just had the best season or is currently the most outstanding player of this draft, but it is who is going to have the best career who is going to bring the best game of the highs and lows over the longest period of time and in my opinion it is ranked here as I have them so obviously that would then bring us to the number one overall pick Kale McCarr there's not much left to say about Kale that hasn't already been said he is clearly the best player of this draft but as the years go on I do think at least the top four uh, if not the top five here, will make arguments. Miro would have to take some big steps to really put himself over Kale, uh, but definitely the other three guys plus Kale all have arguments here for being the best players. I don't think anything I've said here is too controversial. I really, again, think the top four is fairly interchangeable, but when you bring the whole package together and you are talking about a not just what we've seen, but the career outlook of all these guys, this is how I think it shakes out. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions of what I have said here. Uh, I know it's a bit controversial given what I've seen year over year of these redrafts, but I am sticking with this, and I'd love to see how it ages over time. Please, please tell me what you guys think in the comments. Share this far and wide, at least with the fan bases involved here. Uh, and... I will possibly react a little bit more to this tomorrow if nothing's happening, uh, but we'll see what happens in the Twitter and hockey world. Um, that's it for me this morning. I hope you all have a great day. Let's go Devils.